God be praised, and welcome to St. John's Sunday School, going through Catechesis Lesson 5. Let us open with the Lord's Prayer, and I would like you to say it along with me as I say it. Let us bow. Our Father, who art in heaven, hallowed be thy name. Thy kingdom come, thy will be done, on earth as it is in heaven. Give us this day our daily bread, and forgive us our trespasses, as we forgive those who trespass against us. But lead us not into temptation, but deliver us from evil. For thine is the kingdom, and the power, and the glory, forever and ever. Amen. And like I say, last week we began the second table of the commandments. This week, we're going to continue on with the fifth commandment. And what is the fifth commandment? It is, you shall not murder. What does this mean? We should fear and love God so that we do not hurt or harm our neighbor in his body, but help and support him in every physical need. Our stories this week to go along with our commandment is Cain and Abel and Jesus and the Good Samaritan. So, Adam and Eve had a baby boy and named him Cain. He grew up to be a farmer. They had another baby boy and called him Abel. He grew up to be a shepherd. Adam and Eve taught their sons God's promise to send a savior. To thank God for the great promise, they burned up some of their food with fire. We call that an offering. When it came time for both sons to bring offerings to God, Cain did not bring the best of his food for an offering, but Abel brought the best that he had because he loved God and knew how much he needed a Savior. God was pleased with Abel's offering, but not with Cain's. This made Cain angry. God warned Cain about the burning anger in his heart. But Cain did not listen, and led Abel out into a field and killed him. Later the Lord asked Cain, Where is Abel, your brother? Cain said, Am I my brother's keeper? But God knew. God said, What have you done? The voice of your brother's blood is crying to me from the ground. The Lord then cursed Cain and would not allow the ground to produce for him. And God put a mark on him so that other people would not kill him. And Cain went and became a wanderer. Our second story is the parable of the Good Samaritan. Jesus told a parable to show his point about the laws and customs that the leaders of the synagogue were teaching to the people. There was a Jewish man walking from Jerusalem to Jericho. These beat him and stole his clothes and possessions, and left him half dead. Two Jewish leaders went by, a priest and a Levite. They both saw the beaten man and walked by on the other side of the road like they had never seen him. Then a Samaritan came along. Jews hated the Samaritans and treated them badly. But when the Samaritan saw the man was beaten, he had compassion and stopped to help him. He bandaged the man's wounds and took him to a place where he could be cared for and paid for his stay. So let's ask a few questions here and get some answers. What does God forbid in the first, the, sorry, the fifth commandment? God forbids us to take the life of another person or our own life. Genesis 9-6 says, Whoever sheds the blood of man, by man shall his blood be shed. For in the image of God had God made man. Matthew 26, 52 says, All who draw the sword will die by the sword. Cain mother murdered his brother Abel in Genesis, like we read in the story. David murdered Uriah through other people in 2 Samuel. Judas killed himself in Matthew 27. And let's look at a little, a couple topics under that. What about abortion? 
The living but unborn are persons in the sight of God from the time of conception. Since abortion takes the life of a human, it is not a moral option except to prevent the death of another person, the mother. Scripture says in Jeremiah 1, Before I formed you in the womb, I knew you. Before you were born, I set you apart. Psalms is another one. 139 says, Your eyes saw my unformed body. All the days ordained for me were written in your book before one of them came to be. John the Baptist leaped for joy while still in his mother's womb. In doing so, John the Baptist and Elizabeth, by the Holy Spirit, acknowledged the unborn Jesus as Lord in Luke 1. Euthanasia is another topic. The severely handicapped, infirm, and helpless, and the aged are persons in the sight of God, with life given by Him and to be ended only by Him. In Proverbs 31, Speak up for those who cannot speak for themselves, for the rights of all who are destitute. Acts 17 says, He himself gives all men life and breathe and breath and everything else. And another subject on that is suicide. What is that? My own life is a gift of God to be ended only by him. In Luke 12, Jesus said to his disciples, Therefore I tell you, do not worry about your life, what you will eat, or about your body, or what you will wear. God forbids us to hurt or harm our neighbors physically, that is, to do or say anything which may destroy, shorten, or make his or her life bitter. Romans 12 says, Do not take revenge, my friends, but leave room for God's wrath. For it is written, It is mine to avenge, I will repay, says the Lord. Joseph's brothers harmed Joseph and made the life of their father bitter by their wickedness in Genesis 37. The Egyptians made the lives of the children of Israel bitter by hard labor in Exodus. God forbids us to keep anger and hatred in our hearts against our neighbor. Matthew 5 says, I tell you that anyone who is angry with his brother will be subject to judgment. Ephesians 4, In your anger do not sin. Do not let the sun go down while you are still angry. The Jews showed their anger against Stephen in Acts 7 when they stoned him. And God warned Cain yet again in our story against anger in Genesis 4. So does anyone have authority to take another person's life? Yes. The lawful government, as God's servant, may execute criminals and fight just wars. In Romans 13, says, He is God's servant to do you good. But if you do wrong, be afraid, for he does not bear the sword for nothing. He is God's servant, an agent of wrath, to bring punishment on the wrongdoer. What does God require of us in the fifth commandment? We should help and support our neighbor in every bodily need. Romans 12 says, If your enemy is hungry, feed him. If he is thirsty, give him something to drink. In doing this, you will heap burning coals on his head. Abraham rescued Lot from his enemies in Genesis, and David protected the life of Saul in 1 Samuel. We should be merciful, kind, and forgiving towards our neighbors. Ephesians 4 says, Be kind and compassionate to one another, forgiving each other, just as in Christ God forgave you. Jesus showed mercy to the ten lepers in Luke. Joseph was forgiving towards his brothers in Genesis 45. We should avoid and assist our neighbor in avoiding the abuse of drugs and the use of any substance that harms the body and the mind. 2 Corinthians 7 says, Let us purify ourselves from everything that contaminates body and spirit. And that'll conclude our lesson for this week. Um, any questions or anything like that, you can always get with me or Pastor, and we can 
explain out a little more in detail. Um, try to go over as much as we can in this, but still try to keep it in a short form. So let us close with a word of prayer. God, you know the times we have been really angry at people. Sometimes it was because of bad things they did to us. Other times we were angry for no good reason at all. Please forgive us if all sinful anger for the sake of Jesus. Teach us to love everyone around us the way you love us. In Jesus' name we pray. Amen. And thank you for tuning in this week. Um, make sure and pick up your packets for Sunday school. Uh, the crafts and everything will be in there. And we've been changing stuff out each week. So definitely check that out. Um, God's blessings on your week.